So as I'm sitting here on a Sunday, uh, backing up all my servers here, thought I'd take a quick second to talk about disaster recovery. Now, it's one of those things we bring up to our clients a lot and everything else, but I take it really seriously internally as well. And really what I'm talking about is how we manage all the data and how quickly we can get all the data restored. Now, someone made a comment of, you know, I use VirtualBox and someone's like, well, you know, there's some other things out there like Proxbox, which I think is a really cool product. And I plan to uh, take a look at it. Uh, but one of the things I really like about VirtualBox is I can take and export all of my servers. And once I export all the servers, they're the OVA file that it creates is easily importable right back into VirtualBox running on, let's say, my laptop. So, and this comes back to the disaster recovery concept. How quickly from the time you say your server is done, fried, melted, there is no fixing whatever went wrong with it. It is gone from the building, a plane landed on a building, whatever the disaster is. Uh, how quick is it that you can have your business pack up and running? Now, this is the planning steps we go through with our clients and we talk to them kind of creating a plan. Well, a big part of that plan is how quick can the servers be back up? Now, we use uh, a lot of our clients, the Max Backup product, which I'm going to do a separate review of pretty soon because it lets you uh, create a virtual image of a hardware server, create it, virtualizing it, then back up and running to a bare metal restore, which is really important. Uh, but me being a Linux guy and, you know, liking VirtualBox and all the different virtual servers that I have that run mine, I make simple exports of it because I know I can restore them. Now, there's a few more steps to this though. So I've talked about the script. I have a whole thing about how I back up my servers. It's you see running down here on the screen, but I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth. So as I'm running this, and we'll see, is one more of them finished? Uh, all right, one more is done here. So as the servers are running, they're dropping to my free NAS box. So as they cut over to the free NAS box, we're gonna just go ahead and uh, cut this and paste this over to here. And what this is, is an encrypted uh, 128 gig volume that is on my computer physically plugged in. So it drops them to the uh, that box, then I copy and paste them over here and they move pretty fast, you know, just moving across the network files. And what that is, is one of these. I grabbed one of these Corsair Flash Survivor drives. Uh, you can find some reviews on them. I was gonna do a review, but I've seen there's a lot of them out there. It's been around for a while. Uh, it's 50 bucks for 128 gig. It's waterproof, drop proof. Uh, it kind of unscrews and still sell a uh, little shell. It's in there. It, it's pretty slick. Uh, so one of the things I do is I keep that here. So in case a disaster happens to the building, that is my local copy of the server. So, you know, like the server's melted, something happens. And I've had a RAID array, one of the RAID drives in there. It's an SSD RAID or I've had one of them fail uh, on the server. And I went and, you know, easy, no big deal, replace it, RAID rebuilds itself, resilvers and back up and running. Uh, but keeping that here is kind of that, what if there's something that happens here, maybe a minor fire? I feel as though that's pretty protected. It's somewhat fire rated if uh, water damage got in here, uh, it could do that. And also it's encrypted, everything, all data at rest should always be encrypted, remember that. So these backups are all encrypted and locked. That way, if someone does wander off with a little thumb drive, they don't have a copy of all of my servers. But a backup isn't a backup unless it's in two locations. Let me repeat that. <laughs> it's not a backup unless it's in two locations. I don't consider one live running server and a one uh, encrypted at rest backup a backup of it. So once I do this, I actually have more than one of these. So then I take another one, do the same thing again. I copy all the files. So now there's two copies of it. One stays here at the store, one goes into a safe, not at the store and then okay now i have two separate location copies of it and i know where they are and then you know the passwords are known by me and one other employee the other employee knows how to restore these uh so you know there's part of a plan that can be put in place and as the servers are fairly small they can be run like i said even on a reasonably small laptop doesn't have to be something you know uh 16 gig i7 to run this my virtual stack itself only has eight gigs of ram so Back to disaster recovery. So it's all about making sure you have a plan in place and that you test these plans. So one of the things I'm gonna do after I do this is I take the drive home and before it goes into the safe, it's gonna get plugged in my laptop and I'm going to uh, grab maybe one or two of these and I import them, start them up and make sure a local copy can run. That way I know the process is done because no backup is a backup unless it's been verified. And if you don't verify backups, you're just doing some wishful thinking. So. 
The other piece of it is verifying the backup. So then I go through their standard OVA files. I import them right onto my laptop. I'll import a couple of them. Say, okay, did they fire up? Did they work? Great. I know during the export that nothing went wrong. I mean, there's its own verification that it does while it's exporting, but this is a step further. I make sure we import it. That is part of disaster recovering is actually testing your process. Go and did it work? Now, this is something I do like about once a month because that's as much as I really worry about backing up the entirety of the server, as in an image of the server. But of course, the data, the data you create on the server, that's gotta be backed up constantly. Matter of fact, we really looked at it because the data sets are so small, things like our internal wiki documentation and our CRM point of sale and our Screen Connect system, we decided how much data gets created in a day, how much can you live without? Well, Screen Connect, we're backing up daily and we just back up the files and there. We see that's good enough for Screen Connect. Uh, it's, you know, hasn't really been an issue, but obviously in one day we may connect, if we onboard a client, we may add, you know, 20 more connections to it. You think, you know, how hard is it to add those 20 connections again? We say once a day because to properly back it up, you do gotta stop the Screen Connect server doing that in the middle of the day, kind of a pain in the butt. Back to the other backups though. Nice thing is they're just SQL databases, easy to back up. We decided those should be backed up on an hourly basis and then on a daily basis. And we uh, keep seven days worth and then I uh, create sometimes a snapshot of it, but for the most part, seven days right now uh, for these. And then there's a snapshot that holds it back further for 30. That's just a little uh, zip file I add. So it, you know, rotates them back out. But this is just a simple way of doing it, of dropping them in here. But once again, data at risk all gets encrypted. So this is actually the offsite storage for it. So even though it's an encrypted tunnel and firewall rules that say only these IP addresses can talk to each other through an encrypted tunnel, uh, you know, just so people aren't banging away looking for the ports with the sync thing tool that I'm using. So it drops it in there, sync thing sees a file and checks about every 15 minutes for any new files and then copies them offsite. That creates that extra layer of data protection so I know my data is backed up because if we are just entering data, especially when we create a bunch of new passwords and we update documentation for a client or finish a bunch of jobs and send out the invoices, if at that moment it went out, that's a pain in the butt. Well, throughout the day, we're creating a lot of data, so it's an entire day's work. So we decided that should be backed up hourly because an hour's worth of data can be quite a bit. So back to the disaster recovery for that, hourly backups of that. And then I do... Maybe once a week, I randomly test uh, on my home because I have another uh, home set up there. I'll grab it, make sure I can decrypt the file, make sure I can import the database. Great. So that's another thing that's on lockdown. All the data at rest is encrypted. So if you got into the drive, you would then find a GPG file of a SQL file. Good luck getting that apart. The password's not arbitrary, uh, fairly difficult. But I just want to think people thinking about that more. I mean, these are the processes I hope you're walking your clients through, the scenarios you're thinking about. And I think sometimes as computer guys, we don't think about it as much. Um, I have a fairly brilliant IT friend who called that he didn't have backup of his firewall. <laughs> and I'm just kind of like, um, I know how we can get extracted. The hard drive went bad, but it was still readable. It just wouldn't mount and completely boot. Uh, we were able to pull the PFSense config. There is a way you can pull it from the command line. I've learned how to do that because, well, maybe there's been a time in my life playing with one that I made changes I wanted, but didn't back up and goof something up and had to do that. But, you know, it's one of those things I try to really be on top of running a business because we have a lot of clients that are relying on us. And as a business owner of an IT company, I have a bunch of employees that kind of expect a paycheck. And if I make a monumental screw up that puts us out of business, there's a lot of people, not a lot, but I mean, there's eight people working here that won't have a job anymore if I can't make payroll because people won't pay us because we don't do our job. So it's kind of like that domino effect of things that occur. And uh, I kind of enjoy what I do. And that's one way I could fire myself was having some colossal screw up like that. Uh, but this was a quick thoughts I had while I was running these backups. I wanted to record something to say, hey, you know, think about disaster recovery, think about planning and uh, go through and double check your backups. Make sure there's two, if you're doing what I'm doing, exporting servers onto uh, external USB that you're creating two copies of them. And then, you know, it's best to even take yourself out of the environment. I actually on purpose do it at home. I go home, I grab and import these and go, did they work? Can I actually access the data? Does the server boot up and seem to be functioning? 
awesome. It's working. That's great. Uh, but I also, by the way, I do do it in a sandbox environment because some of my servers want to reach out and connect to things and I make sure that they don't have that ability. Uh, so I just test the server. I don't necessarily uh, restore it because it would have conflicts because the backups on it would start running and going to the wrong place. But So think about that too. That Hey, cool. I can make my other machine run over here at home. Oh, wait. It just connected and tried overwriting something else over here. You don't want any of that type of incident. Uh, but those are my thoughts. Wanted to share with you on this. Uh, backup disaster recovery. I'm just always keeping in, in the forefront of your mind because, uh, well, bad things happen. Hardware fails. Uh, you you accidentally miss a firewall rule and a hacker somehow something gets hacked, something gets in, an exploit's found, and you know something goes awry that you just didn't see coming. Uh, and that's what this is for, hopefully. So you have a plan to deal with it, and you've thought it out, and you've tested it beforehand, and then you don't just uh, become complacent that you still test it at some regular interval. And sometimes it's good just to put those things in your calendar, set it in your calendar, going uh, the last Sunday of the month is my disaster recovery testing day no matter what i just do it then so uh thanks for watching if you like the content here like and subscribe if you have some thoughts on disaster recovery feel free to share them below in the comments i'm um, always thinking better ways to do it but you know if there's something that you say i'm just doing wrong or as always i say if i'm an idiot uh, let me know just let me know what i'm an idiot about so uh once again thanks for watching